Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Hey guys, welcome to Play by Play Podcast. My name is Ahmed Ibrahim. And my name is Patrick Bergman. I'm the funny one, and he's the serious one. Well, you can say that, but you can hear that. That's why I'm serious. Life is tough, but in the trenches, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, topic today is being a cleaner, okay? Just a little bit of a context, okay? Those who have read The Relentless or Winning by Tim Grover should know the terminology of cleaner, okay? Tell us more about it. Patrick, you start it off, you kick it off. Yeah, basically, if you don't know already who's the cleaner, stop this podcast, read the book, and watch the podcast again, of course. Yes. So, just shortly, okay? Just shortly. There are three types. I will say it in in my words. In the team, you have few few types of uh, of characters, okay? We have the guy that is uh, just making the job done. Okay, he's just coming there, doing his stuff, and uh, okay, see you next time. Then the next type is the guy that is uh, he's producing some wow moments, but he's not stable. So he's like wow, mm, wow, mm. and then you have the third guy, the cleaner type. This guy takes the team on his shoulder. He is the guy that they call when everything goes to the toilet. He is the mm. guy that when everything is against all odds, he is nah. We can do this. So uh, that's in in like short conclusion and with in my words, uh, what's uh, what's in the book. But uh, definitely you have to read it before, even considering to to make any big changes in your life based on this podcast. 100% okay did Tim go over guys the big guy guys okay his coach Kobe Bryant Michael Jordan it's up at the top of the top of the elite okay so if you want to get that mental edge okay and create that mental toughness relentless um trait then you need to read that book and start implementing it in your life right? especially if you want to be a lead in the game and especially if you're thinking of being a captain, whether it be on the pitch, off the pitch, whatever it may be, in order to take control in your life. Yeah. So one of the traits of a cleaner is to always find a temporary fix. So how many times, me and you know both, how many times you have to play a game with little pain? Like, ah, oh, I have a little uh, glute pain. Oh, I'm a bit sick, you know, I did not sleep good in the night. I'm uh, I'm actually a little anxious today. For everything you do, for everything, you need to find a quick fix, quick temporary fix when the game is on. Okay? Because the, the fans, the teammates, the parents, the coach, they don't give a fuck about how you feel. They just want to see the end result. And to you, if you are a cleaner, you develop the ability to adapt to whatever comes to you. So like, uh, I can give an example of me as a coach. Okay. So I had a, I had a coaching uh, client, but the, the kid is coming with his friend. And like all the session is just going down to the toilet because I prepared the session exactly for this kid, but he is bringing his friend on. And like most of the coaches would say, Nah, the, the kid cannot join. I made my own plan. I need to stick to it. But me, myself, I was, I was okay, yeah. I need to work on improvisation, okay? So let me fix a little bit here. Let, let me fix a little bit here. And then the parent came to me after uh, after a few minutes of the training and he said, uh, wow, I, I'm impressed with you that you managed to, to, to make a session on a go. So that's like expected from you when you are a cleaner. Improvisation. One hundred percent. Um, another thing I would say on the pitch, it's a harsh reality, but 
you can do whatever you want. You can be the hardest worker. You can spend six times in the six times a week in the gym. You can visualize. You can do all of that. But if you're not performing in the pitch, nobody cares, bro. Nobody cares. At the end of the day, you need to perform on the pitch where it matters, right? You can do all of that, right? Uh, make a uh, red light, um, blue glasses, um, normal tech, whatever. Ten hours sleep every day, making sure you're getting three thousand calories from Thursday, Friday, Saturday game. Making sure you can do whatever you want, right? Yeah, breathing techniques you can do the lot. Yeah, if you can't get yourself in tune to perform on that day then it doesn't really matter. That's not going to get you the contract. The fans don't really care, okay? The fans are spending money to come watch you, okay? If you can't perform, okay, and get yourself in, in that game-ready mindset, <laughs> and the life of sport doesn't really matter. It's the same thing with business, same thing with um, as a salesperson. In every walk of life, then the day, results matter. You can say to yourself, oh, I've tried the best, okay? Mate, nobody cares. I'm Patrick, correct me if I'm wrong, but nowadays everyone's too soft. Nowadays, I, I was picking up my, my little niece, right? And they were given like, particular, like a trophy for participating. Oh my from God. From being a number eight, bro. What? And make it sense? Oh. And you need to teach people how, how it feels like to lose. And you shouldn't want to lose. And you need to kind of teach them to be winners. And because if you're feel like, oh yeah, it's okay to lose, blah, blah, blah. You're going to be like, oh yeah, it's okay to fail, which is okay to fail. But what are you doing in order not to fail again? Okay. If you have the intention of not to fail, then it's okay to fail. But if you're failing, being like, I'll get participation award, trophy when I'm older. Da, 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 da. Whoa. Oh, bro. You need to toughen up, do you know what I'm saying? Outcome yeah. is the main thing, right? And that's one thing I'd say from like adolescence, because obviously when you're in academy, you don't really have a league. You're just playing different, blah, blah, blah. And you only start having a league like under 15, under 16, right? Especially in the UK, uh, because anything below that is all about development. But you need, I think it needs to be instilled at a very young age, the winning mentality. Bro, I will... Uh be a bit uh, bit of a boomer now, but uh, I don't understand why players exchange shirts after the game. Okay. One player most likely won the game, the other one lost. It's impossible for me that both are happy. It's like, I cannot just, just comprehend it. How can you be happy after, uh, after you lost the game? And uh, it's just like I don't even imagine myself exchanging shirts with somebody that uh, that I lost the game with. And yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? How are you, mm. bro? Never. So uh, I had a, I had I have a story on that. Uh, one time uh, we played the uh, played game on the weekend, and uh, we lost. Then on the Monday. The coach is uh, coming to me and uh, he was testing me. I did not know that, but he was testing me. He's coming to me and, hey, Patrick, yes, how are you? How was your weekend? And uh, I said, uh, yeah, it was good. It was a good weekend. And then he said, if you would like to ask me, my weekend was shit because I fucking lost the game. And he, bro, he, he just went all the way. And this is this is like how, how you should react after a defeat. Take the lesson. Mm -mm. As a cleaner, especially when you've lost, your first thing is like, especially as you have a winning mentality, Wayne Rooney said the same thing. When you've lost, right, you should feel like, oh, I just want the next game to come quick so I can put it right. Do you know what I'm saying? Not like, la, 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 la. Or like, there's some people that are like, <laughs> giving shit away a half time, bro. Yeah. I was I was that yeah. about or like ah uh, and all the certain people when they like they're going into the game going, Yeah, 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 this guy, I'm gonna swap shit with him because la 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 and then I'm thinking, you've already lost the game before the game started. Mm. So I'm saying you're you're acting like a fan when you're a pro athlete. 
I, 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 me personally, I don't understand it. I've never understand. I've never understood it. Um, as a winner, you have to. Even if it's dirty, you have to win, regardless. Because winning is ugly, regardless, bro. And the best team that I can explain is AC Milan, bro. Right? They're a team that won. Um, I remember there was a uh, Maldini years. They won the league with the least amount of goals scored in history because they were winning games 1-0, um, 2-1, literally like 1-0, like 1-0. Like they were winning games just by the edge and they're winning dirty. Does that make sense? Because at the end of the day, winning doesn't care. Doesn't care if it's beautiful. Doesn't care if it's ugly. Just win. Mm, yeah, 100%. It, it's one clip on uh, uh, on YouTube that I think many people should watch is uh, with uh, David Goggins when he speaks about uh, how he would play against Roger Federer uh, when he would play at tennis, okay? So uh, basically, like, the conclusion of that, uh, that is that uh, many people would lose before even competing with Roger Federer because obviously this is Roger Federer. He will win against me in a tennis game. But the mindset of Goggins was, okay, yeah, I can lose the one game 6-0, another one 6-0, another one 6-0. But then I might have a lucky strike, you know? I might actually win one game. But then, and then my mentality changes. I'm like, oh, I can compete with this motherfucker. But then you just, you just lost already because you ran out of time. To win against him, so you so you lose. No, one hundred percent. It's a, it's how you set yourself up. Yeah, you know I mean, like I said, if you, it's the same thing. Like if you if you're looking like someone, like if you ever, as an athlete or as a as in in any field of comp where there's a lot of competition, never ever, obviously respect your opponent, but never ever put them on a pedestal ever. Well, at the end of the day, this is nothing. This is why I've never understood why people go to concerts or whatever and they're like looking up <laughs> when you can watch it on YouTube, bro. I don't understand that, bro. Like, why are you putting at the end of the day, bro? This guy is a human being. This guy, um, pees, has a, a pisses, has a poo. Do you know what I mean? Like, the guy's a human being just like me and you, bro. So why am I putting him up like he's somebody, but like he's God? He's not God, but do you know what I mean? So that's what I don't understand. Like obviously, like you said, that um that story where your manager was shouting at your players of like, to be like, why are you guys starstruck? Just compete. They just they got legs like you guys. They can run like you guys. You're just giving them way too much respect. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you see it happening when you're playing the National Cup. For me, it'll be FA Cup for you. It's to be the Norwegian Cup when the third tier team plays with the mm -hmm. first tier team. You see it all the time. They're like, oh, nervous. Oh, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 fans. Oh, oh, and they're like, I can't make a mistake. Just play, man. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You're here to win. I'm not here to be like to participate. I hate that, man. Yeah. I can say, yeah. Uh... When I was uh, when I was living in the UK, I was in uh, Mix Clegg's uh, laboratorium, and uh, we had uh, these uh, football tennis games. And one time I was, yeah, I was twenty one years old. One time I was playing with uh, Jack O'Connolly, the centre back mm. from Premier League. And bro, like going to to this game, I was I will fucking beat this motherfucker. I want to show him that I'm I'm better than him and bro I won. I won against him. And like he was nothing special. It was nothing that I could I could say, wow, I could really, really learn from this guy. Bro, nothing. He was just confident in his own body. So like I guess he he if he would play against let's say Sergio Ramos, he would be the same way. I'm gonna win mm. against this this fucker. I hate when players our age especially get asked who's your favorite player and they mention someone else than themselves bro i just don't understand that 
how can you how can you look up to another man when you're 25 bro mm. just look at yourself say i'm my i'm my own favorite player mm. like having this self belief will take you so much further than oh bellingham oh bellingham mm. It was so true, but obviously, like, it's a, it's a, it's a paradox, like, where a lot of people think they have to be somebody in order to believe themselves, but in in essence, you end up becoming somebody once you believe yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. a lot of people don't don't want to believe in themselves because they're like, oh, I'm not proven by that. A lot of these guys weren't proven; they just believed in themselves. One thing you need to understand with success and winning, at the start, you're going to have to be delusional. You know what I'm saying? Because you can see it, you can visualize it, but nobody can. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, this is what I was saying. Nobody cares about blah, 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 this and that. That's for you to then, once you have to believe, for you to then put it into action and make it happen, Okay. And then keep trying and error, keep trying and error, keep polishing the game, keep polishing the game, blah, 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 but never settle. That's what winning is about. Never settle with your standard. Keep leveling up your standard. It's, don't set expectation. That's different. Setting a standard is, is expectation means you're setting outcome and result, okay? You can't control that, okay? But what you can do in the present moment, which is what the cleaner book says, okay? Win every little damn battle. Right, if the guy is chatting to you, you get the last say. Right, if the guy keeps pulling it, you get the last pull. Punch him. I don't do anything. Throw your elbow in in the head. You win every last battle. Right, get into his front foot. Win dirty. If you win the ball, take the man out with him. Right, get into his head. Okay, win the battle psychologically, physically, and technically in the game. Okay, and that can be done in every field of anything in the world that you want to do right i'll compete them in every aspect okay and leave no stone unturned and then that in itself what i'm trying to say is focus on processes and systems over outcomes a lot of people be like oh i want to do i want to play champions league okay they don't understand the processes and system of what actually champions league players do in order to get them to that they don't understand it then how can you expect to win them if you don't know what system and process it work in order to get to them standard and win at them standards? First, you need to master average. Then, you need to master good. Then, you need to master great. And then, you give yourself a permission to master greatness. And I think this is one of the things that players lack nowadays, that they focus on the greatness. They focus on the Neymars or Mbappes, but they don't focus on making the correct first touch. Mm. So uh, there is a one quote in, in Tim Grover's book that I just love. This is one of the top 10 quotes of, 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 uh, of my life that I had. First, you need to fight with the pigs so then you can fight with the elephants. Bro, mm. this is this is real life. First, you need to master the shit. You need to play in these shit non-league pitches. You need to go and get get shout by the manager that you are doing something wrong when in fact you are actually this, do, doing something great. You need to confront this fan that is just throwing in your ear that you are shit. You mm. need to you need to cry after the games that you that you wanted to impress somebody, but it did not go through. Once you get through all of that, then you give yourself a permission to enter the arena with the big elephants. At the end of the day, that's where your wisdom and your lessons are going to come from. So uh, that's why it's really important. But touching up upon what you said before, <laughs> a lot of people thinking, they can dribble, blah, 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 this and that. And then the end product is try. 
or they don't make they don't the time that they should have passed the space is gone and by the time they pass it to think yeah I've completed the pass but then that that guy's got no options now because you passed it two seconds too late but if you passed it two seconds earlier he would have been able to go at it and have a shot but now you pass it too late and you're thinking wow because I've done four extra step overs doesn't matter get the job done job's not finished do you know what I'm saying that's what Kobe Bryant that's where it came from Kobe Bryant job's not finished okay Think about executing first, okay? Then execute it beautifully. Doesn't matter if you're trying to execute it beautifully, but it's not executed. Does not matter. And you're thinking, oh yeah, that that Meg was oh that Meg was crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I hate the oh ah. But then they'll be like, oh, because you gave the ball away. Or mm. you misplaced the past. Or your shot went <laughs> over the bar or something. Do you know what I mean? So get the job done when it's ugly when it's basic it doesn't matter get the job done that's what I tell people and they be like so many kids come to me and be like oh how can I build confidence blah blah, blah. nobody trusts me on the boat that's because you're not trustworthy be trustworthy by getting the basics done right what I say build credit in the bank by the hard pass interception header building credit build it. then you can try that wonder pass then you can try if you're constantly trying to wonder passes and you keep giving away you're going to get subbed off do you know what I mean build credit in the bank that's why that's my advice there is one thing I want to I want to attack now uh, many people might say yeah but who the fuck are they okay okay guys listen we figure it out way too late we are trying to share the knowledge that actually works this is the knowledge that we found out that actually gives you the results. And based on our failures from the past, we understood what's working and what doesn't work. And that's why we are sharing this advice. It's not to brag that, oh, yes, we are we are now fighting with the big elephants. No, we are still fighting with the pigs. But at least we have the right systems to get us through this journey. So... Uh, you can always, like we had Thomas on the podcast and he said that you can always t- take advice from anyone. He don't care. He doesn't care if uh, this guy is 16 year old or 36 year old. You can always take advice from somebody. 100%. Like I, I like to say, a, a someone that is good takes lessons and experiences from their own life Someone that is great and wise and knows time precious takes lesson and advice from somebody else that's already done it or is doing it and that's that been doing it for years because they know that they don't want to waste the time and do the same mistakes that they did. And that's essentially what we're trying to do to you guys, right? Then the day, you can take it with a pinch of salt and be like, ah, I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Or you can be like, okay, let me implement this. Let me try this, blah, blah, blah. And then see it for yourself, okay? Then the day you've got nothing to lose, okay? We're all in the trenches, okay? We're all in hell. Then the day, okay? But what we're trying to tell you guys, okay? Don't get stuck in familiar hell and avoid an, an unfamiliar heaven. That's all I'm going to say, okay? Just because it's unfamiliar to you guys and you're like, oh, this guy doesn't know. Oh, the beta Andrew Tate, oh. Andrew Tate one of his uh listen, don't have to take the advice. It's your life, it's your choice. Do you know what I mean? Okay? But well, it's up to you guys, okay? Would you rather to pay ten thousand dollars to hear the same thing from Andrew Tate? Or would you just like to get it from free from us? Bro, this is the everyone will say the same thing. Like we, because we surrounded ourselves with the winners, we spoke to the winners. We had victories ourselves. We know what works. We know the formula. So it's it doesn't matter that we are not up there yet. At least we have the systems to put us in the best possible spot to reach the top. And uh, listen, bro, I will read you a quote now, okay? And I would like to hear your reaction to it. Your mind doesn't come with the user's manual. 100%. And that's why, like, you need to 
implement your user's failure, your own user's failure, and all the people's user's failure. And that's that's the reason behind it, huh? And obviously, the manual is something that you keep writing as you go through life, right? But if your manual is like this, right? And someone else's manual is this big, right? You're going to be like, no, no, no. Mine, uh, I trust mine. Come on, like, use different manuals, okay? And make a judgment of what you can take, okay? That is best suited for your manual and where you want to be in life. Let's imagine that all knowledge in the world is a A4 blank piece of paper. Your knowledge might be just a little pick on that A4 paper. 100%. Like I say, there's a quote, there's another quote, right? A guy that knows everything, that thinks he knows everything, is a guy that does knows nothing, okay? A guy that, that actually knows everything will think that he knows nothing. Always be a learner and a student to the game. The moment you stop learning, the moment you stop failing by trying new things, it's the moment you stop living and growing the life. Yeah, it's how, how they are also saying that uh, the hardest worker will think that he is the laziest and the laziest worker will always think that he is the hardest worker. My advice, guys, yeah? The most dangerous people <laughs> in the world are the lazy, ambitious people. Stay oh. far, far, stay far, far away from them, guys. They will waste your time so much and they will bring you down so much. Like, oh my God, like, stay far away from them, bro. Them ones that say, they're full of ideas, but yeah, no action plan. Call them daydreamers. Mm, all talk, no action. All talk, no action, yeah. 100%. It's like, uh, oh, that's my brother, you know. <laughs> my brother is, oh yeah, 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 I will get in shape. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm contacting him the next day. Yeah, have you been to the gym? No, no, no. It's, it's from Monday, you know, from Monday. My plan is for Monday, so I need to start from Monday. Then I'm calling him on Tuesday and he's like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I checked the calendar and uh, Monday is on 7th. You know, it doesn't fit. I need to start from 1st. So I will start from 1st next month. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know what's coming on. Then when I'm contacting him the 2nd, he's like, yeah, but it's second February, bro. Of course, I need to start from the next year. Yeah, New Year's resolution yeah. thing, you know. Yeah, it has to be. Those are the worst one, bro. Oh, mm. when it's I'm like, it doesn't matter. You're in November. Just get it done. You get two months head start. You're like, nah, nah, nah. Mm. I got, I got Christmas. I got this. I got that. There. Nah, nah, nah. I start then. I start then. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, say less. You don't want to want to ban it bad enough. You're just a sheep that follows everyone. Okay? But then in the day, as a winner, well, I'm going to say something very big, right? Success is a very dark, lonely road. Because you're not following the sheep road, right? Where everyone's walking, so the path is very clear, right? You're just going to be slave the system, hamster in the wheel. You're never going to get freedom, right? You're basically trading your time for money, right? But the path of freedom and entrepreneurship or whatever, okay, where you control your life, is a lonely, dark road because nobody has support. Because at the end of the day, that path of entrepreneurship or uh, self-success or whatever, it is very individualistic and very unique per person, right? You've got to forge your own path, right? And because of that, as a winner, you have to be okay with being misunderstood. You will be misunderstood from your loved ones, from your parents. Nobody will understand you because they can only start to actually understand you when they get a glimpse or when they see the full success. Well, you're going to have to go years and years of graft, hard work, grind on your own. Expect and be okay being misunderstood. And that's okay. 
only you only it only have to make sense to you and that's it nobody else i know i know i know i'm sorry for breaking the podcast just one announcement okay check out our channels on instagram on tiktok on facebook play by play podcast give the world the reason to remember your name so like if you choose if you tomorrow okay let's say tomorrow you choose a easy lazy road that road will probably le- lead you to some other lazy lazy unambitious road and then you will be just going down 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 if you choose the hard way if you choose the of course smart and hard way like you don't want to grind yourself to to hell but if you choose the hard and smart way it might be uncomfortable at the beginning but in the decades time you will see the benefits of this uh, decision at the end of the day if you look at the graph of a successful person it's not all the time let's say daily it's up down up down little bit up or down 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 up maybe down mm. then after a week is up down up down up down down up up then after a year it's up 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 after a decade success is an exponential growth for those guys that have not been listening in school let me explain what exponential means right very simple it's like compound interest right the first four five years you're not gonna see that money growing by the 10 15 20th year that thing has got a double triple 10 times and it'll just compound right the first five years you might see it grow maybe like eight thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand, and then it'll compound, then it'll get thirty thousand, then that thirty thousand will go fifty, and then fifty to eighty, and then it'll go up. Success is very slow and long there, and then it's quick and then sudden. That's how success is. Right? It's not for everyone. A lot of people don't survive this and then just give up. Okay? That's straight rough road. That's when that's when 98, 99% of people drop out and give up. Okay? Because they're like, oh, I'm sick and tired of being misunderstood. Or oh, I'm sick and tired of not seeing the result. Or oh, I'm sick and tired of this, 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 this. Or oh, I'm sick and tired of like nobody wants to believe in me or invest in me. Or oh, I'm sick and tired of feeling lonely. I'm, oh, I'm sick and tired of investing in myself, investing in myself, seeing nothing in return, blah, blah, blah. And they just drop out, right? But for the people, when winning becomes their identity and their mentality, <laughs> it's no choice but to succeed. No choice. They can't take no for an answer. And only then you can be successful. There is a quote from... Neymar's father that I heard in the documentary of him that I absolutely love and it goes like that first is the chaos then the superstar is born bro this is like real life first you need to get through the misinformation misunderstandment lonely roads just to at the end appear as a superhero 100%. 100%. But again, I always say to people, is your purpose and your why bigger than the chaos? Ask yourself that question. How many successful... Well, be honest. Marcus, uh, obviously, Marcus Rashford's playing right now. But Marcus Rashford, Neymar, whatever, they, be, they all said, I travel 12 hours in the bus. I had one-way ticket. Didn't, I didn't know how I'm going to get back. Most of all, traveling. Now and I was on the bus there and back to just get to training and stuff like that in Egypt. But this bare stories like that, bro. That's because their purpose was bigger than the pain and the chaos. They were like, I need to get my mum out of the hood. I need to get my parents out of the favelas. I need to get, I need to get my, my family out of poverty. Even like money, bro, 
my my village needs hospital and water. Because his father died, do you know what I mean? From the lack of like medical treatment and stuff like that. So in essence, that's why I say to a lot of people, what's your why? A lot of people go, Oh, it's because I'm passionate about football, I like it. <laughs> I promise you you're not gonna make it, but I promise you, but I promise you you're not gonna make it, but the football is so saturated, but every single because I like it. You're not gonna make it, but there's more lows than highs. It's ridiculous, bro. It has to be beyond your feelings because feelings is fleeting. Feelings come and go. So if you're if that's what you're really relying on, God help you succeed, bro. Your purpose has to exceed your chaos and the pain. I had a coaching uh, session today. And the kid uh, asked me how to score penalties. And uh, first first of all, he said that uh, he would like to shoot penalties in, in his team, but uh, Thomas always takes all the penalties and I don't know what to do. And I said, you go and grab the ball and shoot yourself. And I said, do you want to Thomas to steal your dream at the end? Or do you want to achieve this dream yourself? And he was like, Oh, I don't want to let Thomas steal my dream. Yeah, I need to take the ball and score the penalty. Yeah, that's true. And like that's 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 how life works. You need mm. to out out compete another person. Mm. Like there can only be the one best person in the in the history. It cannot be two mm. bests in the history. There is only an only one. You need to grab life by the scruff of the neck, bro. Like. Winning doesn't care. Winning doesn't owe you anything. The rent is due every day. Pay up or winning will give your reward to someone else. I'm a strong believer that uh, people that achieved success, they suffered enough to achieve it. And like people that haven't, haven't achieved success yet, it means they haven't suffered enough. Like if you look at Ronaldo, bro, this this guy looks lost his father when he was like twenty. Bro, look mm. at Messi, he was a kid with with some autism and shit, and uh, he was like <laughs> one meter twenty. Bro, but that, that's what I'm saying. Like all of the Mo mm. Salah, they they suffered more than me and you together when they were mm. kids, and that's why they now they are successful. But mm. nobody cares about how. They got beaten down to 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 nothing when they were kids. I feel like life is a lever. It's 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 not that you can always win or always lose. You see many mm. players that that have been given uh, life for free. But then, in the adulthood, they might lose lose it all. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.